Hello and welcome to Algebra 2, Chapter 6, 5, Remainder and Factor Theorems. And these are things that you're going to want to write down, just FYI. Alright, so the first thing we're going to talk about is dividing polynomials. And so here at the top, you're going to see that we have some function f of x divided by another polynomial d of x. Okay, so we're dividing a polynomial by another polynomial. And your result is going to be the quotient, because remember the quotient is your result from dividing. And there might be a remainder, so this term right here is your remainder. And so the remainder still has to be divided by our d of x that we started with. The degree of our remainder, which is r of x, must be less than the degree of the divisor, which is what you are dividing by. And that's when you get to where you can't, can't divide anymore. So if your remainder has a degree of 2 and your divisor has a degree of 4, you're done because you can't divide 4 uh, x to the fourth into an x squared. Okay? And remember, just like when you first started long division many years ago, you can always check your division by multiplying. Okay. So we're going to start out by talking about long division and long division with polynomials. And so we're going to divide y to the fourth plus 2y squared minus y plus 5 by y squared minus y plus 1. So you're going to start out with your divisor bar. This first polynomial goes underneath because we're dividing it by the other one. So we have y to the fourth. So something that we need to remember is that you have to put in missing terms. So there's y to the fourth. So we're going to say plus 0 y cubed because there's no y cubed in that polynomial plus 2y squared minus y plus 5. Okay, and we're going to divide that by y squared minus y plus 1. Okay, so if you didn't make yourself a little note, add missing terms. Okay, so when you do long division with polynomials, the first question you're going to ask is y squared times what is y to the fourth? And so the answer should be y squared, because y squared times y squared would be y to the fourth. So the reason you have to add missing terms is that so we have these columns. You have a y to the fourth column, a y cubed, a y squared, a y, and a constant column. So we're going to put y squared above the y squareds. Then you multiply, and you multiply your y squared times all three things out front, okay? So y squared times y squared is y to the fourth, and so then you're going to put that under the y to the fourth. y squared times negative y is negative y cubed. y squared times 1 is a positive y squared. Okay, let's see if I can clean this up a bit. Okay, so now, once you've done that, you subtract. These are the same steps you did before when you're doing long division. So now you subtract. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute this minus sign, so it's going to be minus plus minus. So y to the fourth minus y to the fourth, those cancel. y cubed plus y cubed, nope, sorry, 0 y cubed plus y cubed is going to be y cubed minus, nope, plus y squared, 2 minus 1 is 1, and bring down my minus y. Okay, then you're going to ask yourself, y squared times what is y cubed? And the answer there should be y. So we're going to say plus y, then we're going to multiply, so you're multiplying the y times all three out front. So we're going to have y cubed minus y squared plus y. And again, we are going to subtract those. So we're going to put them in parentheses. We're going to subtract these. So I'm going to distribute that minus sign. 
my y cubes cancel. I'm going to have 2y squared minus 2y plus 5. Okay. So then we're going to say, well, y squared out front, y squared times what is 2y squared? The answer is 2, so we're going to have a plus 2. Then we're going to multiply, so we're going to get 2y squared minus 2y plus 2. Okay, we're going to subtract all that. Sorry, I ran out of room here. That cancels. That cancels. We're left with 3. And so how we write remainders is we're going to say plus, because that's our remainder is what we're left with, 3 over y squared minus y plus 1. So this is our answer, this whole thing right there. All right, so let's try long division one more time. So we're going to put the 2x squared plus 13x minus 7 underneath. We're going to do x plus 6 outside, and this time we didn't have any missing terms. So your first question is x times what is 2x squared? So x times 2x is 2x squared. So you can put the 2x in the x column. You're going to multiply by the numbers out front. So you're going to have 2x squared plus 12x, but then you are going to subtract that. So we distribute that minus sign. Those cancel. You end up with x minus 7. So x times what is x? And the answer there is 1, so we're going to put a plus 1. Multiply, you're going to get x plus 6, but then you're going to subtract that, so we distribute that minus sign. Those cancel, you get negative 13. So this is going to be plus negative 13 over x plus 6. And there is your answer. And sometimes you won't end with a remainder, so you just stop where you left off on top. Okay, I want to show you, though, the connection between long division and synthetic division. Because remember, we did synthetic substitution. And so if you write your coefficients, so we had 2, 13, and negative 7. And what we're going to put on the outside, actually, is a negative 6. Okay, so remember, we dropped the first number. So we drop our 2, multiply, we get negative 12, add, we get 1, multiply, negative 6, add negative 13. Okay, so before we were just evaluating. So here's how you can use this for division. This started as x squared, x to the first, and x to the zero. So what happens is that this number then at the bottom becomes x to the first plus no x plus your remainder. There's your answer that we got right there. Okay, um, we're going to talk about synthetic division some more, but the deal with synthetic division is it only works if you're dividing by a, a binomial. So you have to know how to do long division if you're dividing by anything other than a binomial. All right, so the remainder theorem says if a polynomial f of x is divided by a binomial x minus k, then the remainder is r equals f of k. So notice the difference here, f of x, f of k. This is f of x evaluated at k. Okay, so if f of x equals, you know, let's just say x squared plus 2, f of k would be k squared plus 2, so it's evaluated at k. And remember that's what synthetic division does for us, is it evaluates for that letter, or for that number. So that's what a remainder theorem is, that the remainder is f of k. Okay, so now we're going to use synthetic division to divide this polynomial, x cubed minus x squared minus 2x plus 8, by each of these binomials. Okay, now, your remainder theorem, though, talked about x minus k. And when we do 
our synthetic division, okay, we're going to put in our coefficients. We're going to put in 1, negative 1, negative 2, 8. We want to put k out here. So the question then needs to be, well, what is k? So in this case here, k is 1, okay? Because remember that minus k, k equals 1. All right, so drop, which would be 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. All right, and so then our answer, if this was an x cubed to start with, our answer is x squared minus 2 plus 6 over x minus 1. There's my remainder. All right, and the other one we're going to look at, if we write our coefficients, we're going to have 1, negative 1, negative 2, 8, divide by... This time, what is k? k is negative 2, because if this is x minus k, k has to be a negative 2. So drop, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Okay, so this time we have a remainder of 0, which means it's just an even answer, no remainder. Remember, this was an x cubed, so we drop down to an x squared squared minus 3x plus 4. There's your answer. Okay, why don't you pause the video and see if you can work these out. All right, for the top one I got no remainder. So your answer was just x squared minus 5x plus 3. And k I used was negative 2, so make sure you use that k. For the bottom one, k was a positive 4. I got a remainder of negative 6, which gave me x squared plus x minus 3 plus a negative 6 over x minus 4. Okay, so there is how we can use synthetic division to divide. But remember, it only works for binomials. So next is the factor theorem. And the factor theorem says a polynomial f of x has a factor x minus k if and only if f of k equals 0. So if you evaluate for k and you get 0, then it's a factor. Okay, so for instance, if you have x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals 0, and I want to know um, is x plus 3 a factor? So then what is my k? My k is a negative 3. And so if I find, so if this up here was f of x, so if I do f of k, and oops, so if I, yeah, if I do f of k, which would be f of negative 3, we're going to have negative 3 squared plus 7 times negative 3 plus 12. So we're looking at 9 minus 21 plus 12. 9 minus 21 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 12 is 0. So because f of k equals 0, then yes, that is a factor. And if you remember, if you factor this, it's x plus 3x plus 4. So that's what the factor theorem says. So, factor f of x equals uh, 3x cubed plus 13x squared plus 2x minus 8, given that f of negative 4 equals 0. Well, if f of negative 4 is 0, that tells us that x plus 4 is one of the factors. Okay? So if I'm trying to factor this, here is already one of the factors, and I'm, prob I'm looking for at least two more. So what you probably want to do is use synthetic division, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my coefficients. So 3, 13, 2, and negative 8. And I'm going to divide this actually by negative 4, because that's what k was, was that negative 4 there. So we're going to drop multiply, add, 
add, multiply, add, multiply, add. That's what we expected because it told us it was a factor, so I expected zero. So then this becomes 3x squared plus x minus 2. All right, and can I factor that? So what I'm looking at at the moment is x plus 4 times that. Okay, so but can I factor that any further? So I'm going to try 3x and x, and we're going to put 2 there, 1 there, plus, minus, so that we get 3x minus 2x, which is 1x, and then negative 2. So there is that trinomial completely factored, and it was all because I knew that first factor to begin with, so I could divide that out. Okay, so let's try that again. So it's saying that f of negative 6 equals 0 is already telling us that x plus 6 is a factor. So if I do my synthetic division, and I do 3, 14, negative 28, negative 24, and I'm going to divide that by negative 6 because that's my a. So we're going to drop, multiply, add, multiply, add. Oop, one second, that should have been a negative 4 when I added, which would make that a positive 24. There we go. So now when I add, that's negative 4. Multiply, add, okay? Because remember, you do want it to come out with 0 because it's telling you it's a factor. So this is telling me that I have 3x squared minus 4x minus 4. And can I factor this? So we're going to look at 3x and x. And if we do negative 2, that would be negative 6 plus 2 would be plus 2 to make the negative 4 in the middle. And then we're going to bring down our x plus 6. It does not matter the order of the three binomials. They should just all be there. Okay. So 1, 0 of f of x equals x cubed plus 6x squared plus 3x minus 10 is x equals 5. Find the other zeros. So remember, once you factor and you set all those factors equal to 0, you're finding the zeros. So if this is one of our zeros, x plus 5 is a factor. Okay, because what you're going to do is you're going to take what they're giving us here, move the 5 back to the other side, and that's what it would look like before, or right when you're setting it equal to 0. So x plus 5 is one of my factors, but what I'm really searching for, though, is um, factoring this so that I can find those other zeros. So let's do our synthetic division. So we're going to have 1, 6, 3, and negative 10. We're dividing by negative 5, because that's my k. So we're going to drop, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. So we're looking at x squared plus x minus 2, which is going to factor into, let's do um, x plus 2x minus 1. So then your other zeros are negative 2 and positive 1. Because remember, you're going to set both of those equal to 0. So there's your other zeros. You had three zeros. OK, so let's try that one more time. It's giving us one of the zeros and wants us to find the other ones. So we're going to do our synthetic division. So we're going to use our coefficients. And we are dividing by 7, right, because that's my 0. So we are going to drop, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, which is going to give us 2x squared plus 5x plus 3, in which case we are going to factor this. And we're looking at plus 3. Nope. 
Let's try that again. How about plus 3 plus 1, because I want the 2x and the 3x to make the 5x in the middle. And so x is going to be negative 3 halves and negative 1. So there's your other two zeros. All right, so one more word problem and we're done. So we have a company that manufactures CD-ROM drives. And uh, the demand functions for the drives is p equals 75 minus 3x squared, where this p is standing for the price they charge per unit. Okay, and now it cost them $25 per unit to, to produce them. And we are asked to write an equation given the company's profit as a function of the number of CD-ROM drives. So if you recall, you know, what is your definition of profit? So profit is income minus expense. So if we look at income, income is going to be how much we charge times how many units are sold. So our income is 75 minus 3x squared times x, because I'm going to sell x number of units, because it does say x is how many millions of units are sold. Now that's the money I bring in, I need to subtract from it how much money I spend, which is going to be 25x, because we're going to have $25 times these x millions of drives. Alright, so we do a little bit of simplifying here. We're looking at 75x minus 3x cubed minus 25x, and we have to combine like terms, and remember you need to write them in descending order. So we're looking at negative 3x cubed plus 50x. All right, so this word problem continues on the next slide. So the company currently manufactures 2 million CD-ROM drives and makes a profit of $76 million. At what other level of production would the company also make a $76 million profit? So what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to solve for x. So we have our function that we wrote on the last slide, p equals negative 3x cubed plus 50x. And it's telling us now that our profit is $76 million. So because our uh, x is in millions, then our p is also going to be in millions. And so we're just going to put 76 equals negative 3x cubed plus 50x. Okay, and we're going to want to set this equal to 0, so we're going to move the move that over, there we go. Okay, so from here, how do I solve this? Well, if I already know that one of my solutions is 2, then if I do my long, or my synthetic substitution, so negative 3, that's my x cubed, 0x squared, 50x, and then negative 76. We should come out, let's see here, drop, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, there we go. So then this gives us negative 3x squared minus 6x plus 38, which we can solve if we set this equal to 0. We can solve this for x because it's a quadratic. And so remember, you know, you got, you got quadratic formula. You have factoring, which I'm not sure it's going to factor. Um, you have completing the square. With a leading coefficient, I would probably go ahead and do a quadratic formula. So we're going to look at x equals negative b, which is going to be a positive 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So we're looking at 6 plus or minus the square root I'm just going to do all of underneath the square root at the same time. So we're looking at negative 6 squared minus 4 times negative 3 times 38. 492 
all over negative 6. Okay, if you put it in your calculator all at once, make sure to put parentheses around the top part. <clears throat> and so I get negative 4.697, which probably is not a number of CD-ROMs sold. So that was for the plus. So now we do the minus. And we're going to get 2.697. So there we go, 2.697. Remember, this is millions of CD-ROM drives. Alright, that's what I got for you. Make sure to let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in class next time.